Welcome back to the Mount Man Medical YouTube channel. Thanks for hanging out. Today, we're gonna to talk about some cat tourniquets. They're a fantastic product. You should definitely have one, but let's go into some of the details and some of the information you might need to know before you buy one. So everybody knows what a cat tourniquet is. This is one of the most, this is the most common tourniquet out there on the market today. If you run into a tourniquet, it's probably gonna be a cat tourniquet. It's in Call of Duty for crying out loud. So these are everywhere. They're on cops, they're in ambulances, they're in the military, they're everywhere. We sell a bunch of these. These are a fantastic product, but they're not a perfect product. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you might need to consider before you buy one of these cat tourniquets. The first and most important thing that you need to know about cat tourniquets is that there's fakes out there. There are tourniquets that are pretending to be cat tourniquets and they do not hold up nearly as well as the original, the OG cat tourniquets. These are produced by North American Rescue and they are a fantastic product. I've used them before. I know that they work and they have a great track record but the ones that are coming out of china are found on amazon and they are about one third the cost of a real cat tourniquet these are running about 30 bucks a piece whereas the fake ones like this one here are running about 10 bucks a pop so you might think oh wow that's a great deal it works just as good as a regular cat tourniquet it's the same product right no they are not this one is not made to nearly the same standards or the proper materials as the North American Rescue Cat Tourniquet. This has gone through seven different generations to be upgraded to what it is to this day. And this one is not being upgraded at all. And it has terrible manufacturing processes and horrible materials and why this is a very bad product to have. We'll talk about the differences between these two in a, another video, but right now we're gonna know that we wanna make sure that we're buying our tourniquets from a reputable source and that, that we're not getting these off of Amazon if we can help it. Um, these are still useful. What I like to do is use them for training. I write fake across the uh, timestamp so I don't get it mixed up with a real cat tourniquet that I might need to use to save my life or somebody else's. So be aware, these are out there. Now, one of the things that people do not like the cat tourniquet for is this plastic windlass. I've talked to quite a few people who have been in a very bad situation overseas and here in America, and they've had the windlass break on them. Now, this is the old generation of cat tourniquets. I have not yet heard of a windlass breaking on the Gen 7 tourniquets. I'm not saying that it hasn't happened, I just haven't heard of it. Uh, this is a very well-designed, very robust plastic polymer, and it is gonna stand up for you, so I wouldn't let that bother you. This is a very well-designed tourniquet, and it'll work for you when you need it to. Now, one of the other things that I hear people say is that they don't like the hook and loop. This Velcro type system can get clogged up with mud and sand and it can lose its ability to adhere to itself and come loose. I've talked to very reputable people who have had that happen to them and I know from them that this is something that's happened. I have also been in very sandy, very muddy environments and that's never been a problem for me. So it might be a possibility for you. If you're in wet, sandy and muddy environments, maybe pick a different tourniquet and we can go over some different options in another video. Now let's talk about how to self-apply this cat tourniquet properly. If this arm is the wounded one, I'm going to take my cat tourniquet and I'm gonna hold it by the inside of the strap and I'm just gonna give it a shake to open it up. We're gonna get something that's gonna be kind of like this. It might not be perfect, that's okay. We're just gonna loop it around our arm and get it centered to where we need to have it on our bicep. We're gonna try and get this up nice and tight, but proper technique is technically two to four inches above the wound. I'm gonna take this red tab and make sure it's pointing across my body. This is gonna give us the proper body mechanics to get this nice and tight, which is an essential step to this process. Now that I've got the red tip in my hand, I'm going to open it up and pull it nice and tight. Again, as tight as possible, we're gonna get all of that slack out and I'm gonna wrap this end around as far as I can so that it adheres to itself. And then I'm just gonna leave it just like that. I'm gonna take the windlass and I'm gonna to begin to tighten it. How many turns do you think I need to put in this windlass? 
The answer is until the bleeding stops. So watch the wound and monitor the blood flow. And as soon as the blood stops flowing, that's when we need to stop turning this windlass. Once we get it into position, we get it connected with the windlass retaining clips, and then we can bring the remainder of the strap through. If you want it to look nice and neat, we can wrap it around the handle of the windlass and come back through. Not a necessary step, but it helps to kind of keep it nice and tied up. If we need to drag the casualty, this tail end isn't going to be hanging down and getting stepped on and getting jerked loose. So that might be an important step for you. You can take it or leave it. All right, now we have the tourniquet completely applied appropriately and properly, and we have complete occlusion of the arteries. I have no pulse, and this is a properly applied tourniquet. Now, one thing to note is that this tourniquet is becoming uncomfortable. I've had it in place for a little while now, and I need to get it off. It's starting to get kind of painful. That's how we know we've applied this tourniquet correctly. We do not want our casualties to talk us into removing or loosening the tourniquet. If they are conscious and they have a tourniquet applied correctly, they're going to be complaining about it. This is just standard. You need to expect it and you need to talk that person into leaving that tourniquet in place. Because it's so uncomfortable, they're going to ask you to either take it off or to at least loosen it. If we do this, they're just going to bleed out slowly and they need all of the blood in their body that they have. So we need to keep that tourniquet applied. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Thanks for hanging out and checking out this video on the cat tourniquet. This is a fantastic product from North American Rescue, highly regarded as the best and the most prolific tourniquet on the market today. You can check this out and get one of your own at mountainmanmedical.com. And while you're there, check out our Wind River and Yellowstone trauma kits. Be ready for whatever the mountain throws at you. I'll catch you guys in the next one.